Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Microsoft Graph. And in this video, we are going to talk about user objects. So if you are going to spend 15 to 20 minutes on this particular video, I can assure you, you'll come to know everything that's more over related to user objects. Okay. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about the operations part related to Microsoft Graph API, whereas the agenda of this video will be knowing how the user object works, what are the permissions that you need, which endpoint you should access. And I will be using Graph Explorer, Postman, as well as PowerShell, three different platforms to access the same set of information, which is as of now protected by Microsoft Graph API and which will be more over related to users so that you get more insights in terms of choosing a particular platform. Then I will be showcasing you how to do all these operations like get, list, create, update and delete. And the most important part is I'll let you know guys how to check the related object list. Now what do I mean by this? That as we know that it's a very huge entity system wherein every object is related to some other object okay now i'll show you how to go ahead and check what all attributes can be queried what all related objects can be queried so all this information is going to be addressed in this particular video but there is a certain prerequisite which i need from you guys and the first one is you must know how the app permissions part works and you must have an idea about how OAuth 2.0 client credential flow works. Now, I have already covered all this in a lot more detail. So if you want to know more, you can go ahead and watch the protocol series, which is already there on the channel. Now, let's proceed by knowing the permissions which are required for you to access the user endpoint or user information through Microsoft Graph API. The first model which your application can use is obviously user context wherein you'll get the user authenticated first and then use the access token of your application to access a particular information that's been protected by Microsoft Graph API. In that case, your application needs these permissions or you can request these permissions to get user information. But when your application is running as a daemon or as a microservice, that means an application context is used to access a particular set of information, then you can use any of these permissions. But what you have to make sure that these permissions have been explicitly granted on portal.azure.com. Since there is no user interaction, so the consent process will not work. It's very obvious in terms of application context. But most of the application demo, which I'm going to showcase you guys, in those applications, I have granted directory read all permission because if only user.read.all is being given, then you will not be able to query the related objects. Likewise, let me give you an example. My application is trying to access groups information and for that there is a different endpoint altogether which I have to reach. But the fact is that this permission which is user.read.all will not work for that endpoint because every endpoint has its own permissions. Okay. Now the next thing is how to check the related objects list. Now this is something which is exceptionally important for you to understand and this is the most important part of this video now let's go deep in terms of understanding how the metadata works so if you guys remember since uh, we post most of the content which is more about related to identity so let me make it more relatable Likewise, we have ADFS Federation metadata. Likewise, we have Azure AD Federation metadata. Similarly, there is a metadata for an API service, which is Microsoft Graph. And that can be accessed by a specific link, which is graph.microsoft.com forward slash the version of API that you want to use, and then the metadata as a keyword. Now, all you have to do is you have to go to this particular link and then search for this value which is entity type space name is equal to user that's it that's all you have to do as of now 
the scope of this video is not to let you know guys how the metadata works but the scope of this video is to let you know guys how a user works but don't worry i will be covering a video that will be completely focused on how the entire metadata works and then it will be more insightful but as of now what we will do is we'll go to this particular link and we'll try to see what all information we are getting okay so as of now I am at this particular link which is graph.microsoft.com forward slash beta forward slash metadata and now I'm going to check my user object which is entity type name is equal to user. Now this section that you see here is almost everything that you need to know for any object type. That means likewise the query that I have done here you can do it for user, you can do it for devices okay but since our target is to understand user let's pay attention to user first okay this list that you get here is all the attributes that can be queried for a user object over beta endpoint and this section that you see here which says navigation property it's more over related to all the related objects okay to show you guys how exactly this part works let me go ahead and query a user first. So this is the link which you have to access for querying user information where you will be doing all the operations. Okay. So if I be very specific, the link which you have to access to do or to execute any of the operation likewise list get update or even creation of user is the same endpoint which is graph microsoft.com forward slash beta forward slash users so i'll go to this particular link and i'll click on run query okay and as you can see i'm getting a list of all my users provided i have the appropriate permissions now i will go to a specific user and let's say i'll copy the object id of this particular user okay now what i'll do instead of accessing this information uh, by UPN I'll access this information with the help of object ID and now as you can see I am getting all the information that's more over related to this particular user okay but this user might be owning some of the devices as well right okay and let's see whether device or there is something exists like device as a related object or not and as you can see I'm getting this value which says managed devices now all you need to do once you have provided the user detail complete user detail that means user endpoint with the object ID forward slash then you can provide the name of a related object so let's say I want to access managed devices and let's see what happens it's still going on and as you can see, I'm getting the list of all the devices that's been owned by this particular user. So that's the purpose behind using related objects. So let me address this how exactly it happens. If I copy this link and if I go here, this first section is something wherein you have to define the user object itself, which you want to access. And then you can define the related object which you want to access. Now. I have used managed devices but the fact is that you can use any of the properties which are available in navigation property but then there is something called singleton values wherein you have to define the attribute of a related object as well so likewise let's say I am trying to query approvals if it is a singleton value which I will be covering in ORATA video then you have to define an attribute that belongs to this particular object as well okay so as of now just keep this as a reference that there are two type of objects that can be queried the first one is entity type itself and the other one is singleton if i'm trying to query a singleton value then i have to address the attribute name of my related object as well so this is the complete list which you can refer for user object and you can come here and check for the entire list of user attributes as well as related objects moreover everything is available here okay now let's come back to graph explorer and see what all we can do from here so get 
get post patch and everything I have already covered but the fact is that I'll show you one small example of patch so that you will be able to update the information so as of now what I'll do is since this object is synced from uh, on-prem 80 I will not be able to update any information that's moreover related to this particular object but I have an object which is here at the red concepts work.com it's a cloud only object and let's see if we can update any of the value okay so this is a cloud only object if you have to update any value that's moreover related to user object all you need to type is the attribute name as well as its value in double quotes that's all you need to do okay so if I'll go here and I'll say I want this to be updated as one two three four five six in fact let's run this query and as you can see it's been executed now if I'll do get as you can see the employee ID is being executed and it's been saved on the user object as well now listing user object simply means you are trying to access the entire resource type which is users that's it all the users will get listed if you're defining a specific user you can just give the UPN name or the object ID you'll get the required list but the things are slightly tricky when you want to create a user object okay now let's say I want to create a particular user object for that you have to use post you can keep the same endpoint here and instead of giving the UPN the value of any of the users just reach this particular endpoint but if you will see our deck there is a set of mandatory attributes which are required okay you need display name you need mail nickname and you need UPN value as well of the user so that you can create a particular user object so what I have done is I have already defined this value in one of my notepad and I'll just copy that value from there to a graph explorer and as you can see here I'm hard coding the password which I'm going to send but the fact is that in next attempt this user which is explorer at conceptswork.com has to change his password now as you can see another object with the same UPN already exist okay it's fine so what we'll do is we'll name it as explorer123 at conceptswork.com and as you can see a new user object is created so this is a predefined structure that you have to use for creating a particular user object and you can choose any of the platform and it will work now there is something which is really important and which I would like to explain which is moreover related to context which I was referring to right so graph explorer will always work in user context because as you can see I'm signed in with a particular user object but the fact is that when it comes to postman and PowerShell things are different you can use user context and you can use application context as well you can use both the scenarios now when it comes to how to use postman to access a particular set of information this is something which I have already covered in a lot more detail in the video wherein we have discussed about client credential flow but quickly I will show you how to access a particular endpoint with the help of postman as well so here you can define the endpoint that you want to access and then you can click on get new access token make sure all these values are populated you are defining a proper client ID and a proper client C Secret. if you guys have not seen the video which is moreover related to OAuth 2.0 client credential flow please watch that video and everything over here will make a lot more sense I will be adding that particular link in the description section as well now the moment I will click on request token I should be prompted to enter my username and password because as of now I am using OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow but let's say I'll cancel this because user context is something which we have already seen let's request a token with the help of client credential flow so now if I'll click on request token as you can see I'm getting a token all I have to do is click on use token and then click on send that's it that's all you need to do and you're getting the same set of information in your postman console as well 
Now the last thing which is left is how to do it with the help of PowerShell. So what I have done is I have written already two different scripts just to showcase you guys. And the fact is that with PowerShell, what you have to make sure that if you have to make good scripts, you have to do certain verifications. So if you guys remember, whenever I talk about token or whenever I talk about authentication process, we always use JWT.MS or JWT.IO you know, websites to decrypt token. But the fact is that when you are working with scripts, you have to verify the permission of the token by your own. Okay, so I'll show you an example which I have done wherein this script is going to decrypt the token as well, the access token, and I'm following client credential flow as well in this particular script. And as you can see, a particular access token is requested. It has been decrypted and I can see the permissions as well. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll show you this particular script which I have written. And as you can see, this is the section which is requesting the token and this particular section is actually decrypting the token for me and verifying the roles. Okay. Now, if I'll go to this particular section of create user, this is a different script that I have, which is used to create users, but it runs in a particular loop. So as you can see, the moment I have initiated this particular script, I'm getting a prompt that you need this particular permission to create tokens but the first prompt says enter your domain name and that's exactly what I am doing as of now what is happening under the hood an access token is requested the permissions is verified and now I have been prompted that whether I want to create a user or not so all I have to do is click on Y and then click on yes the first prompt is enter your display name so I'll enter my display name, let's say tech concept. And it's asking me for a male nickname. I'll again enter the same value, which is tech concepts work, let's say this time, and then click on enter. Now it's also giving me a suggestion that your UPN value must be like someone at the red concepts work.com. So what I'll do tech concept at the rate concepts work.com. And as you can see, this particular user is created and the same user is also getting listed here because there is a different query that I'm doing now it requires a lot of effort you know just to showcase you guys all these examples so if you want to get access to all these scripts and all these things which I show additionally please feel free to join our channel now let's quickly switch to my portal and see whether this particular user object exists or not so if I'll go to tech or if I'll go ahead and search for tech users, as you can see, I'm getting this particular option. So we have covered a lot more information in this particular video. And this is the main part of this video wherein you can access the metadata and get the required set of attributes and the related objects. And this is something which you can use in any of your script, let's say in any of your application. If you're looking for some sort of information that you're not finding very easily in the articles, you can just go ahead and check the metadata and you will get that information. So let's quickly talk about the summary of what all we have discussed in this particular video. We have discussed about Microsoft Graph users, common permissions, what are the operations which are available, how to check the related objects. In the next video, we are going to see how to query only the changes which are moreover related to a particular user object or all the users in the tenant. If you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe and don't forget to check our playlist which is available for member only content thank you so much bye bye